Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be discussing the bone of the leg called the tibia. Now tibia is the medial bone of the leg. We have already studied femur of the lower limb and finally we are going to go to the region of the leg. The leg is basically situated between your knee joint and your ankle joint. The most medial bone in the leg which is homologous with the radius of your forearm is known as the tibia. However the only the difference is that the radius is a lateral bone, tibia is the medial bone and that is because I've already talked about this, the fact that during embryonic life, limbs undergo rotation. So this becomes the medial bone. So the tibia is a bigger bone compared to the fibula. The fibula is the lateral bone of your leg that we'll talk about later. Without further ado, let's talk about the side determination points of the tibia. So point number one in side determination is to determine which is above and which is below. So let's suppose this is how the leg is facing. The tibia upper end is larger as compared to its lower end. So as you can see that the upper end of the tibia is larger compared to its lower end. That's point number one in side determination. Point number two in side determination is that the medial side of the tibia will in its lower end be projecting below the rest of the bone. So one more thing we've got from our side determination points is that this is your medial side of the tibia. Hence it can be kept like this. Point number three in side determination is that the anterior border of the tibia as you can already see in the video how sharp it is and it is crest like. So that is the third point in side determination. So point number one is that the upper end is quite larger than the lower end. Point number two, lower end in its medial part has a bone projecting downwards called the medial malleolus. And point number three is a sharp anterior border. Now let's talk about the parts of the tibia bone individually. Basically tibia consists of an upper end, a shaft and a lower end like any long bone. Let's begin talking about the upper end of the tibia. The upper end of the tibia basically consists of this area called the condylar region. Now this area consists of three important parts. Number one is the medial condyle, number two is the lateral condyle, number three is the intercondylar area. And apart from this, the upper end of the tibia also contains the tibial tuberosity anteriorly. Alright, let's talk about the medial condyle first. So the medial condyle is going to be larger than the lateral condyle. That is the first part to know that this is the medial condyle. The medial condyle basically in its posterior part will be grooved, okay, because there's some muscle that's going to be attached here. Apart from that, the medial condyle is overall, you can see that the medial condyle is oval in shape and the central part of the medial condyle is quite concave. So this is where the medial meniscus will sit. The medial meniscus can be imagined as a jelly-like substance that has a hole in the middle. The hole is right here. So what is going to articulate over here with the condyle? The femur's lower ends, all right? So the femur's medial condyle is going to articulate with the medial condyle of the tibia and all the places that are articulating will be covered by the medial meniscus except for this concave area or depression that is lying at the center of the medial condyle. Moving on, the medial condyle on its lateral part is having a prominence called the medial intercondylar tubercle. Alright, so that was all about the medial condyle. Let's talk about the lateral condyle. The lateral condyle also posteriorly is grooved. The lateral condyle anteriorly has a rough flat impression which is known as the Jerdes tubercle. So remember this point. And finally, the lateral condyles Postro, so this is postro inferior aspect. So postro inferior aspect consists of this tiny circular facet. This is the fibular facet for the superior tibiofibular joint. Also, the lateral condyle, similar to the medial condyle, has lateral meniscus attached to it with a hole in between, which is directly going to be in contact with the femoral condyle. Apart from this, it is a circular condyle. On its medial part, it is also prominenced in a form of lateral intercondylar tubercle. Okay, now let's talk about the intercondylar area. The intercondylar area is very important because we're going to talk about the attachments on the intercondylar area. So the intercondylar area consists of 
this area between the two condyles in the which is narrowest in its middle part and on its middle part it is elevated and why is it elevated we've already talked about the two tubercles that are causing the elevation this is known as the altogether the intercondylar eminence so now let's talk about the tibial tuberosity which is a part of the upper end the tibial tuberosity is basically going to have an upper smooth part and a lower rough part the upper smooth part is going to bear attachment of the ligament and patella that we'll talk about in the attachment segment. And the lower rough part is basically going to be, be subcutaneous, all right? Subcutaneous meaning it'll be close to the skin. So you'll, if you ever feel your uh, leg uh, anteriorly, you'll feel a very ha hard prominence and that's the tibial tuberosities infrapatellar or like the lower rough part of the tibial tuberosity, which is subcutaneous. So that was all for the upper end. Now let's talk about the shaft of the tibia, which is quite... Uh, fun because the tibia consists of an anterior border which is extremely sharp and this anterior border is the subcutaneous border. The anterior border below extends to the medial malleolus anterior border. All right, so the anterior border is quite subcutaneous. If you try to feel your leg, you will feel with the tibial tuberosity this anterior border. Then we have a medial border obviously because it's close to the malleolus the medial border below extends into the posterior border of the medial malleolus and finally the lateral border the lateral border is also known as the interosseous border and that is because it has to form the interosseous joint with the fibula with the interosseous membrane similar to your forearm now let's talk about the surfaces that these borders give rise to first we have the medial surface so the medial surface is basically going to be subcutaneous, the most subcutaneous. So overall, what are the most subcutaneous part of the tibia that you can literally feel on your leg if you try to palpate it right now? The infrapatellar part of the tibial tuberosity, the anterior border and the medial surface are subcutaneous, all right? So this is the medial surface. The lateral surface has a very characteristic concave appearance in its upper three-fourths. And then we have the posterior surface. The posterior surface consists of a very important ridge called the soleal line. You'll see the soleal line as an oblique ridge running towards the medial border. The soleal line has divided the posterior surface into an upper triangular area and the lower area. Now, what is special about the lower area is that there's going to be a vertical ridge. You can literally feel a prominence. It'll be like a vertical ridge that will basically be separating the lower part below the soleal line into a medial and a lateral part. This is important when we'll talk about the nutrient foramen, we'll talk about the attachments, all right? Below the soleal line, the vertical ridge, wherever it starts, so at the beginning of the vertical ridge is a nutrient foramen. Here passes the nutrient artery, which is a branch of the posterior tibial artery and it's directed downwards. This is also a very important point. So that was all about the shaft of the tibia. The lower end of the tibia is also very brief. That it basically has an anterior surface. Anterior surface in its lower part is grooved. Then it has a lateral surface, which is quite important because this is a very triangular surface. This, cons this is going to form the inferior tibiofibular joint. It is triangular in shape. Here is where basically the fibula is going to articulate. It's also known as the fibular notch. Then we have a medial surface that is continuous with the medial malleolus, which is a strong process projecting down from the bone. And then we have the inferior surface. The inferior surface is going to form a joint with the superior trochlear surface of the talus. Now, what is the talus? The talus is the bone of the ankle joint or ankle, okay? So this is going to form the ankle joint with articulating with the talus bone. So that was all for the side determination and bony features of the tibia. In the next video, we'll talk about the attachments of the tibia. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching.